hear people talk about things. Fat is good. Fat is bad. This type of fat is good. This type of fat is bad. Uh, but you only can have so much of this fat. Going vegan is good. Going vegan is bad because you don't get enough amino acids. Then you got to mix it all up. So all these different things and it's like, oh, like what do I do? Like where do I go? What's the right answer? Um, you know, so it's it's just very interesting. So much noise out there. It's no wonder why people get bogged down and tripped up on what's the best way to go on your health and fitness journey. NAC Warriors, how are you doing today? Super excited to be here live again on uh, Facebook and um, ready to start the day. Uh, technically speaking, um, we are halfway through the week. I don't know where you are around the world, but uh, yeah, for, for me, I'm halfway through the week, which is really good and really excited for the rest of the week. Um, as I keep continuing on my journey, I've been doing a lot of, um, let's say, different things to sort of, um, what's the word? I feel like I'm a floating head right now. <laughs> Let me see if I can back this up a little bit. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm, I've been really thinking about the journey that I've been going on. And I know this is a little bit different than the question of the day, but I just wanted to share this a little bit because I feel that um, it's important that we document and go through a journey of learning. And I feel like a lot of people kind of just go through the, the journey and sort of like let things happen. But I find that now that I'm really passionate, since 2015 became really passionate about health and fitness, I really start questioning things and really looking at things with a different lens. And it's been very helpful in my journey. And I guess actually it's kind of related to what I'm talking about. But as I go down and ask questions and really just become curious with health and fitness for other people, for testing things out on my own, it just becomes so eye-opening because you have these assumptions. And one of the latest things that I've been doing is taking a survey for people um, for a certain question because I'm looking at how other people deal with um, the topic consistency. And as I go through that, more questions appear. And typically back in the day, that would frustrate me beyond belief because that's not what I really wanted. I wanted answers. And now I get excited when I get questions because it means it's an opportunity for me to learn and take myself to that next level. So I don't know, back in the day, if you ever did science experiments and you had to come up with your hypothesis and then you um, go out there and do some experiments and before, especially in school, you wanted to be right, right? At least I did. When I came up with the hypothesis, I wanted to do the experiment so I knew I was right. Um, now I've changed that a lot and let me get into this a little bit. So uh, today's question of the day is, um, what are your biggest aha moments when it comes to your health and fitness journey? And for, for me, it's very simple. Um, it actually started in 2015 when I went on this personal journey. One of the things that I had to do was let go of the noise and everything that I heard. So in the past, I would jump and I would run towards this program, hear about that program, try that program, and then I would say, ah, you know, I need something different. And as I did that, and also when you, so what I ended up doing, and this was just by accident, I just got tired of all the noise and I just said, you know what, I'm getting rid of all of it. And that was probably my first aha right? Like I'm not bound. How many things have I known in my past that I was bound because of what I was taught? And so sometimes we have to undo what we learned because that's actually not accurate information, right? And even today, you have to be hesitant on what you're learning or you have to dive in so deep. And a lot of us don't have that time, especially if we're busy individuals, 
to get into that deep level of analysis. So I just find it very interesting that for me, the, the first thing I did was just let go of everything I knew and just said, okay, the one thing that I like, and that's how I started my journey. What do I like? What do I want to do? And so that's what I ended up doing. I started with running. I loved running, did that. Um, I had enough knowledge to know some things, but I didn't want to hold on to them so dear that it would affect me um, in, in my journey. So I said, okay, fine. Um, running, I like running. And then I ended up finding things that I enjoyed doing. Like, so I got a cookbook and started doing, um, reading different recipes, like the recipes, got bored with doing the recipes, went back to my old ways. So I was just doing this thing of what did I enjoy doing? And that was it. That, that was my first aha. First, have fun. Then once I learned that I could let go of things and not worry so much about, oh, you have to do 30 minutes, you have to do this, you have to do that, this, that, and that. It was like all these rules, but no rules that made sense that never went together because they all contradicted themselves. That was my moment of like, whoa, okay, I can be happy, I can have fun, and I could go out there and just do whatever I want as long as I had fun. That went very well for a very long time. But then I tried something else. And this was just me, like, just, just like kind of exploring. And the next aha moment came when I started thinking about the things that I didn't want to do or the things, the information. I was just took, taking in the things that resonated with me. Like, I like that. Let me try that. I like this. Let me try that. This now got bored stopping that. But then I, yeah, transitioned to this place where I was like, you know what? I don't agree with that. And I said, but why don't I agree with that? Like, what about that did I not resonate with? And once I started doing that, that actually took my life to another level because then it started making me question the things that I held on to so tightly and um, it was very easy to avoid those but I said what if what if I did try to lose weight or get healthy but started looking at the things that I resisted against and when I did that it wasn't it was actually very specific things I found that I resisted against it like Let's say, for instance, um, what was one of the things that I resisted against? Uh, I can't remember. Like, now I've let go of so many things. Like, I just don't even remember. But once I got rid of uh, fasting, fasting was a good one. Um, I think they call it intermediate fasting, whatever. So I was a, I was a morning, I had to have breakfast. That was my thing. Like, I had to have breakfast. And there came a point where fasting came across my plate and uh, when I was doing some research and I totally resisted it. And I said, you know what? What do I resist so much about this? Then I started diving into it and a part of me was more the calories, right? It was like I didn't want to chip myself out or jip myself of the calorie intake because I know and heard that it's bad to have um, like certain uh, the uh, you need to have a certain amount of calories and if you go below that you start messing up your metabolism and to me fasting was all about cutting out meals and getting rid of calories so that you would lose weight well I changed that and said well okay what if I change the rules um, and said okay I don't eat from this time to this time but on the second half of the day or whatever time I've decided that I'm going to eat, I still consume the same amount of calories. What would happen? And letting go of the results, like letting, letting, letting life happen, Let, let's experiment and try that and try going against, but fit in a way that makes sense to me. You know, like it made sense to me to try to fast, but still keep in the calories. Can I do it? And, um, 
doing things like that, challenging what I perceived was the uh, resistance and really dive in deep, like what was it that resisted against, that I resisted against, and just letting it go. Now, who knows, maybe I'll get to the level where I'm like, you know what, let's go below the calorie count that they recommend and see what happens for me. And that's the other thing, like I started looking at what made sense for me, not what made sense to that person or that person. I wanted to hear what they had to say. And then if it really triggered me, I was going to try it. And once I did that, giving into whatever came that resonated with me and I resisted, my whole life changed. It was like a total, it was like a big aha. Like there are no rules. The only rules are what work for me and what doesn't work for me. So just try it out. Like yesterday I talked about, uh, you know, the book, uh, The PH Miracle and how there was a, um, a big sort of thing about the author and I kind of let that go and said I don't care what people think about the author I don't care what the author did I care about what the author wrote in there and does it make sense did it resonate with me did it resist me and why and what did that journey what did that adventure have waiting for me if I tried it did I feel like it was going to end in death if so, then I was going to avoid that. But if I felt like, you know what, there might be here something here, let me go try it. And that's what I did with the with um, uh, the fasting that I've been doing lately. And, you know, so now I find these different things and I'm like, let's try it out. So once I did that, that was my big aha. Nobody knows what they're doing out here. Nobody really knows. Nobody really knows you. Uh, when it comes to medical issues, I do have to, I, I back away from that because I, I'm not a doctor. I don't have a PhD um, in anything. I only have a PhD in myself. And again, like I said yesterday, I break things down into principles, fundamentals, and my own journey. And so that's where things get a little interesting is just going out there and saying, that might have not worked for you, but it sounds interesting or I don't really like that at all. When I'm on those two extremes, I like to try them out. And then usually in the middle is where I find the answer, right? Like I find like, oh, it was just with this one aspect that I get a kick out because I totally resist that. Until I find something that counters that, then I'll go try it out. But I'm not ready for it yet. And that's, and that, and that's just what it is. It's like, you gotta go out there and experiment and once I did that, that was my big aha. And, you know, learning from everybody with an unbiased mind. That's really what it came down to. Like, if I learned something, I did not want to hold on to it so dearly. And that's the biggest thing that people do. We want to be right so much that we hold on to things that we think are right and we let go of things that are that we feel are wrong. And once I switched that up and said, let me try everything and question the things that I feel like, if I feel so strongly about something, I wanna start questioning it. If I resist something, like I, you know, that's my mode of operation. That's my big aha moment. And so that's what I ask you to do is like, if I could teach anybody anything about my journey, it would be to let go of everything and of what you perceive to know and just let life come towards you and listen to what it has to say. And if you feel strong emotions, whether it's positive or negative, go examine it. Examine it and you will see that if you truly keep an open mind your life is going to change and that goes as far as even to exercising like a lot of people like really get hung up on what other people think but if jump roping is fun for you go outside and jump rope if hopscotch is fun for you go out and hopscotch I, I say this all the time like you gotta do what's fun for you and if you have this emotional attachment of what other people think, 
we got to dive deep into that and let that go because it could be the thing that sets you apart. You know, it was funny. I saw a TikTok the other day, actually not the other day, several times ago, uh, probably a couple of months ago, and it was about jump roping. And I was like, you know what? This person started with jump roping. They weren't doing so well, but now they're like an expert jump roper. And I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. Like, that would be cool to do. And you know there's a lot of cardio in jump roping. And so a part of me is like, yeah, I want to try that. And let me do that. And then I said, but you know what? And this is knowing yourself. You know what I resist against um, jump roping? Is that I'm going to start stop because I keep hitting that jump rope. Like, you know, like your foot catches on it. And I said, how do I get away from that? And I said, what if I just cut the jump rope? So it's just like two ropes there. And I'm not worried so much about um, jumping up and down and making sure my feet get stuck. But what if I could do the same motions and do the same thing that that person was doing without the worry of tripping up on a on on a jump rope. So like if somebody out there, if you want to go jump rope, but you're like, yeah, but I'm going to fall and break my neck. Uh, they have these things actually, they created them, I found them, um, that has like a handle and I think a ball at the end of attached to a string or some plastic thing. And you can swing it around and do like a jump rope motion. And I was like, that's super cool because then you can do those cool things that you see in Rocky and all that. You don't have to worry about falling and tripping and all that stuff. And then you can just go and have fun, right? And then once you get brave and you feel good, then maybe you go to a real jump rope or whatever. But like that's the type of stuff like you want to start challenging. I wish I knew about the, the, the product that they had there. I didn't go look for it, but, you know, just start challenging whatever it is that you have out there like – Oh, people are going to judge me. Oh, I'm going to trip and fall. Like, just let go of that and say, start challenging yourself. And then you'll see that your world will change when it comes to health and fitness. And again, if I go back to principles, this is more of a principle. Like, this type of aha, you can apply anywhere. Like, start challenging yourself. Start questioning yourself. Like, why do you believe that? Why do you want resist that? Why do you resonate with that? And you'll start seeing that these journeys that come up will actually start raising your life up to a whole new level. I'm just focused on health and fitness. So with that, let's see what our question of the day is tomorrow. Uh, let's see. What is the number one service everybody needs to know about for losing weight and staying fit? So my question for you today is... And let me know, like, what is the number one service that you think or you have participated in that would help people lose weight and stay fit? And that's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. And I'm going to share you share with you my uh, my recommendation. OK, so with that, uh, if you haven't already, please join our Facebook group. Uh, super, super excited about our Facebook group. It's growing um, slowly but surely. But uh, I can't wait because very soon I'm going to be releasing for the first time Awakening Your Inner Warrior. And for the first 100 people or within a time frame, I'm going to put a time frame on it. But uh, the, at some point, either the first 100 people or I'm just going to stop it at uh, probably at the end of December. Whoever comes in, I'm giving the program for free and letting you try it out and see what you think of it. So sort of like a trial, see how it goes. So beta, we'll call it the beta test. And I'm super excited to release this and start it. And I, I'm hoping to have it out by the end, like to um, a Monday. That's my goal is to have it ready to go for Monday. And so the first 100 people who show up into our Facebook group get to participate for free in this program and they'll be part of the beta testing uh, to help me uh, refine it because of course new things you don't know what you don't know um, and so I'm super excited so if this is something you're interested in just real quick what it, awakening your inner warrior is assuming that you're an individual looking to be healthy and fit um, and I've either reached you somehow the idea is that what 
I'm going to do is show you how to awaken your inner warrior. I believe everybody has inside them a strong, powerful, beautiful human inside them. And it's been, and as far as health and fitness goes, I'm going to try to, I'm not going to, I'm going to release that inner warrior that sits inside you. And in the, at the same time, I'm going to show you how to take whatever program, whether you make it up or you have an existing one, and transform it in a, into a way that works for you so you can do it for a lifetime. And you don't have to worry about, you know, why you this yo-yo dieting. I'm going to, I'm going to end that for you for, for good. But I'm going to show you how to go on this journey and awaken that inner warrior because at the end, what you're going to do is you're going to learn so much about yourself and why these programs don't work for you and how do we make them work for you. And you're going to be in getting that energy that you probably are looking for. You're going to know how to fit it into your lifestyle. If you're a busy individual, especially if you're a busy individual, this will help you like tremendously. I gear this towards busy individuals, but it can help anybody. And then finally, um, it's going to get you that control and uh, control and confidence in your health and fitness. And you're just going to learn about yourself. And then the rest is like sort of history. But this is like, we'll, we'll call it like phase one, getting you awoken, your, awaken your inner warrior and getting you started on your path to a lifelong of health and fitness. And so I'm doing this for free. Uh, again, for the first hundred people who jump into our Facebook group and um, at some point, whether there's a hundred people or not, I'm going to stop and not going to do it again. And anybody who's in the Facebook group gets the beta testing for free and uh, go from there. So with that, have a good day. Talk to you tomorrow. Again, please make sure to let me know what the best service you have out there and I will talk to you tomorrow. Hi everybody, how you doing? Hope you're having a wonderful day today. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Angelo. I'm the founder of NFT Athletic Community, uh, creator of NEC Warrior Roadmaps, and a global running coach. And really, I'm here to help indiv busy individuals get them into health and fitness and show them how you can fit health and fitness in your lifestyle. Uh, and actually make it last for a lifetime. So not just uh, here, you know, do a little bit here, a little bit there uh, to show you how to create that for your life. So here we go. Today's question I had to prepare for because I was told that um, I needed some references. So here's the question of the day. The question of the day is what is your favorite book on losing weight and staying fit? And again, please feel free to jump on and ask any questions because um, this is an open session as well. But uh, here's here's the question uh, and here's the answer. I actually read a lot of books. Um, I like to read, although I've been trying to do audio, Audible uh, lately, and this is not a plug for Audible, but I seem to still have a knack for wanting to read the book. So I, even though I've got Audible, I seem to end up buying the book anyways because I like to highlight, I like to read, I like to see the words. And Audible is sort of like, um, what do you call it? Sort of like a, a classroom where information is just coming at you and I don't digest that as well. So what I end up doing is Audible, like if I'm driving, I'll put it on there and hopefully some stuff uh, sort of seeps into my subconscious mind, but I typically like to read and see the words and marinate with it. Whereas with an audible, I feel like it just keeps on going. Um, and it's hard to pause and rewind, especially if you're driving. So, um, but when it comes to health and fitness, I actually haven't read a lot of books and I'll explain why in a little bit. Uh, but the books I have read, here here are the ones that I have read. I've read The PH Miracle, and that was written by Robert Young. And this one is, I would say, an extreme vegan, but even beyond vegan uh, diet. It talks more about pH levels and how your body fights to keep the, let's say, the acidity level at a certain point because I guess if it's too low 
or too high, you instantly die. So um, your body will create fat in other in diseases are created because of the body trying to keep the acidity level um, neutral in your body or not. I shouldn't say neutral. I forget what the exact number is, but um, it was actually a very interesting book. A lot of skepticism uh, with the author, and I never look at that stuff. When I read articles or anything like that, I don't really necessarily look at what other people say. I, I know what's going on about them, but I want to hear what they have to say first, right? Like I want to make sure that there's probably some method to their madness. And you know what I found out by um, following Robert Kiyosaki is that uh, he gave me this advice, not personally, but I got this advice from one of his things, is that one-third of the people out there are going to love what you do, one-third are going to hate what you do, and another one-third is not even going to care. And so <clears throat> the people with usually the loudest voices are the ones that, um, the one-third that don't like you and they'll do whatever it takes to take you down, um, and it's usually something to defend themselves or something that's insecure about themselves. So um, I suggest reading the book. Uh, I suggest trying things out and see what happens. And that's not just this book. I, I would say everything. Another one that I've read is the No Meat Athlete Cookbook by Matt Frazier and Stephanie R uh, Rum Rum Romine Romine Romine. I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name. Um, this was another one. It leans more towards vegan eating um, and was a really good book. So the two main books that I've read are mainly based on nutrition. Uh, the rest of them, I guess there was one book that I've read uh, when it comes to endurance training. And I thought it was this is like one of the best books. Like every time there's a new edition of it, I have to buy it because I like what this person did. Uh, it's called the Triathlete's Training Bible. This is great for endurance running, understanding, um, you know, fitness. And this was written by Joe Friel, F-R-I-E-L. And I highly recommend it if you're an endurance athlete. It's got so much in there. And yes, it's focused more towards triathlons, but he breaks down each sport, which is swimming, running, and biking. Um, and it's really incredible. And I highly recommend that book to everyone who wants to learn more about the science behind um, exercise. Now, as far as like building muscle and all that stuff, I always go to programs. So like, like I mentioned, I've done P90X and I, whatever books or whatever comes with those programs, I read those cover to cover and they're good. They're interesting to see like how they, um, raved with P90X and then all of a sudden there's P90X3, which is like 30 minutes versus an hour long and how they determine like now 30 minutes, like, uh, it's just very interesting how different philosophies come out and how they got the research. So that that's kind of fun for me to do. But um, if I had to read my next book on health and fitness, the next one that I hear about a lot, and I've I've wanted to get my hands on it, but I haven't, is The 4-Hour Body by Tim Ferriss. And I appreciate this book because this is the book that I want you to read um, and not Tim Ferriss's for our body. Um, I want you to create your own for body, uh, for our body or your book, because that's the ultimate book that you need to have is the book. That's you. Like I have Angelo's book. You need to have insert your name health book because, um, there's a big difference between you and I, between myself and Tim and, but what I appreciate and what I really like what Tim did here is he became his own guinea pig. And if you follow me, you see that I do go out there and read these articles and find some things and I have to try it. Like I don't care that Robert Young was on trial or whatever. I heard about him and it interests me and intrigued me what he did for a study and what he came up with. And whether people think he's a kook or not, it doesn't really matter. I need to know, will this work for me? Because obviously, 
um, he thinks it works for him. And so I need to try things out. And so I will never say, hey, uh, t- what Tim's got going on uh, doesn't work. I need to try it first. And when I go through my journey, I kind of break things down into three sort of categories, right? So I go out there and I try something. And what what's the last one? The eccentric, the ECP, the eccentric contraction program that I created. And it was a very simple program based on an article that I read. And um, it, it's, I have to try it. But when I try these programs, I break them down into three different categories. Principles, health and fitness fundamentals, and Angelo's journey, right? And so I want to share all three of them with you. And the the principles are things that I look for in the things that I read and research and say, can I apply this to other aspects of my life? For example, yesterday I talked about your why, how that's super important to understand in order to be, um, it's like one of the biggest mistakes people make in health and fitness. But this, I think, is a big mistake that people make in all aspects of their life. So that's like a principle to me. Fundamentals are more of, it's specific to that category. So for instance, when we talk about health and fitness, I talk about the six habits. And the basic habits are um, oxygen, quality of air, <clears throat> uh, sleeping, hydration, motion, nutrition, and uh, mental, mental health. Those are specific to health and fitness. Uh, mental health could be, I would say, would be a guiding or a principle for other areas of your life. But like you, there are other habits that you need to understand when it comes to your career, when it comes to your relationships. But there's the principles. And I think one of the best books I've ever written, writ, read about principles were seven highly, seven highly effective habits for people or something like that by Stephen Covey, a really good book and um, was eye opening. But <clears throat> that type of stuff is like how I break things down. And then I look at Angelo's journey, right? So when I look at ECP, I I think to myself, okay, ECP, that is not a principle. Uh, it's not something that you can transfer from one aspect of your life, say from health and fitness to your love life or to your career. It's specific. It's a fundamental exercise for health and fitness. <clears throat> but then there's the journey. Eccentric contraction program, ECP, may not be something fit for you. I was looking for something that would fit a busy individual. And if you're not a busy individual and you like big challenges and you want to feel like you're lifting a lot of weight and doing a lot of work and you have to exercise for 30 minutes plus because that's your belief system, ECP is not for you. But if somebody relates to what I'm talking about, then that could work for them. So that's <clears throat> sort of how I, I envision these, these different things that I research. So when I write the ultimate book, it's... You know, Tim Ferriss did the four-hour body, Tim Ferriss, but he's doing it based on what he, well, I haven't read the book, so maybe he's looked at other people as well, but this is his journey. You should have your own book, your own journal. I talk about this a lot. Document your journey because your book could help other people. Your journey could help other people discover something. So when I'm going out there, There's different things that are influencing what goes in my book, conversations I have with people, the inside. When I do the inside on our Facebook group, I look at that and I say, okay, what can I learn from this and and take it on my journey? Um, You know, reading books, all these different things, all these inputs are coming through and I welcome them because I'm so eager to test them out and try them out and fail or make it work and show you how this affected me. But at the same time, I want to pull out the um, the principles and the fundamentals to help you on your journey on a, on a broader base. So we can really get to being successful. When I say I really want to help people around the globe, I want to help them with the principles and the fundamentals of health and fitness. But 
I also want to share my journey so that if you relate with that, um, you know, you are, you can pull from me, you can pull from my experience and then know, okay, here's, because everything we do, like it's based on my NAC warrior roadmap. And those are the fundamentals of health and fitness that actually could be a guiding principle to everything. And so once you understand your NEC warrior roadmaps and how to awaken your inner warrior, then you start going on this journey. So my goal really is to share all these different things and help you through sort of the the potholes, the speed bumps, the uh, roadblocks that you're going to have in your health and fitness journey, especially if you're a super busy individual, I want to show you how to get around those. And then you go on that journey of your own and say, oh, Angelo is talking about this ECP. Will that actually work for me? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But if somebody has like a lot of time, they could use ECP, but they may want to try something else. And so that's really where I come in is I want to awaken the inner warrior of everyone and teach them the guiding or the principles of health and fitness as well as the fundamentals and show you how I discovered them along my journey and how you can use them in your life. And then you write your own book because that's the ultimate book that you want to read. That's the ultimate book you want to share because you know who that book is really going to help most likely? Most likely it's going to be if you have kids or family members that share genetics, right? A lot of this stuff may be genetically uh, tailored to, and, and that if you, if you really dive into like get deep into health and fitness, you see that there's a lot of gray, right? They, they give you ranges like what's a healthy fat percentage. And then they give you this range, right? Because they can't tell you exactly because that's where your journey is. Your journey is to figure out within this and maybe even a little bit outside of those ranges, where is it best for you, right? And that's where that's where the journey really lies in to really exploring and having fun with um, your fitness journey. So when you go out there, you need to start creating your book. And a lot of people get hung up on, you know, I talked about this before, like how to get started. I don't care. Like, I hope you you join our Facebook group and jump into awakening your inner warrior. That to me would be very special that a gift that I love to give like people. I want to share that with people. Um, but <clears throat> I don't care if it's Tim Ferriss's book, one of these other books that I mentioned, you go out and find a program, just start somewhere and start creating your book because that's where you're going to find the most success is understanding you, really going through and trying to find out what your book is. Now, I'm not saying like, yeah, come up with your own fitness program and all that stuff, although you could with knowing the principles and the fundamentals, you could easily do that and I show you that in Awakening Your Inner Warrior, but Really, ultimately, you need to go figure out what works for you. And the other thing is, um, I lost my train of thought on that, so maybe I'll come up with that a little bit later. But uh, I guess at the end of the day, what I'm asking you to do, here's your action. Um, Go out there, start your journey. If you're not sure how to start it and you're not sure who you can go to for answers, come join our Facebook group, NEC Warriors. And join our program, Awakening Your Inner Warrior, and do that program and see what happens, right? You, you got to try something or, or go out there and get Tim Ferriss's book or go out there and um, discover, you know, go out there and pull things from YouTube. Like go find a guru that you like and listen to what they have about health and follow it, follow it, follow it, follow it, and then start seeing for real, not just saying, oh, that didn't work, but why didn't it work, right? Why didn't this actually work for you? What what could you have done differently or how could you manipulate it so it works for you? That's what you really want to figure out. That's that's the real true journey of finding and discovering the real book that you need to read, which is the book of yourself. So I hope that may be a little corny or whatever, but uh, that that's the honest truth, right? Your book is the only book that's real. 
and you need to start writing it and start discovering your journey. And that's what I hope to help you do. So join our Facebook group if you haven't already. And um, also let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite health and fitness book? I'd be interested because um, the next one I plan on reading is The 4-Hour Body by Tim Ferriss. But, and I, he's not asking me to promote this. I'm not getting, uh, that's why I'm not putting any links in there or putting it, popping it up here. Um, if you want, you could come in the Facebook group and ask me about it and I'll give you the, the actual name and everything, but I'm not uh, an affiliate or anything of those. Um, uh, so I, I just, it's just what I'm going to be doing. So if you have a book that you suggest me read on health and fitness, please let me know and I'll go check it out. And, um, yeah, from that. So that's it for today's, uh, daily health show. Um, I guess show I'm trying to figure out what to call this so I'm kind of in experiment mode, but I figured, hey, why not do this live? I will see you tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern. Um, who knows what the next, you know what? I'll pull up. I have a list of questions here. What's tomorrow going to be about? Um, we've done that one. Uh, what's the biggest aha moment you have when it comes to losing weight? So that's what we're going to talk about next time is what is the biggest aha moment I've had? Um, and if you have a big aha moment, please let me know. I'd love to know what your aha moments have been. And I, if I, if I get it, get them, I'll share them with, um, everybody on the live session tomorrow. Okay. So, um, yeah, join our Facebook group. I'm going to keep repeating that over and over again because I want to really help you. And with that, have a good one.